Good morning, grandkids. Well, it's we're in the beginning of April. This year is going fast already. I've just been straightening up my shelves here, waiting for you guys to come, listen to a story, pick out anything you'd like to snack on, and let's sit down here at I the table. I am standing in the home of a hero. Oh, I hear a Negro talking. Okay, I picked out a book today that's more appropriate for spring. This is The Passion of the Ancestor Moth. And this is about a place where way back when I was younger, I went to visit. I had some business to take care of there. And it's a beautiful, beautiful place inside a cavern. It has a big hole in the ceiling that lets the sunlight in and the rain. So it's almost a tropical place in there. Trees grow in there and plants. And then there's this beautiful pink flowering tree in the middle. And there's moths that look like beautiful butterflies all over the place. I remember they were just all over. Uh, so this story is about those ancestor moths. This is to be read by all novitiates of the temple. The order of the ancestor moth is as ancient as it is noble. I never tried to be an order of that temple before. That would be cool to be an ancestor moth novitiate. We nurture and celebrate our beloved ancestors. And their ancestors are moths whose spirits are manifest in the ancestor moths. <gasps> so their spirits are in all those moths flying around in that place. Each moth carries the viron, viron of an ancestor's spirit. That's cool. Loosely translated as the will to peace. The viron can be sung into the silk produced by the ancestor moths. That's amazing. When the silk is in turn spun into cloth and embroidered with the genealogy of the correct ancestor, clothing of wondrous power can be made. Wouldn't that be cool that you sing something into the silk thread as you're spinning the cloth and it makes it magical? Adepts of our order are gifted with prescient powers. The wisdom of the ancestors can sing the future into the present. For this reason, our order in our order alone has been given the privilege to interpret the Elder Scrolls. That's why way back then I had to come here and go to that tree and somewhere around that tree I was had to read that Elder Scroll. These writings exceed even the gods, both Adra and Daedra. Wow! Such insight into the inner fabric of reality comes at a price. Each reading of the Elder Scrolls is more profound than the last. Each leaves the priest blind for longer and longer periods of time. So when he reads it the first time, he's a little blind for a little bit. And the next time he has to read one, he's blind for longer. I remember taking one of those Elder Scrolls to a priest and he read it and he, and he was blind then. I remember doing that. Finally, 
The last reading achieves a nearly sublime understanding of that scroll's contents, but the priest is left permanently blinded to the light of this world. No longer can he read the scrolls. But he has all that inner knowledge and light. This monastery is dedicated to the service of these noble members of our order. So they take care of all these blind priests. They now live out their lives with the ancestor moths that they so love. They're underground. Oh, that's the place I was talking to about that I went to. It was well suited to the moths. Yeah, they're all over the place. They raise and nurture these fragile creatures, singing to them constantly. Very cool. They harvest the silk and spin it into bolts of cloth, and they sing to that silk. They weave the cloth, embroidering it with the genealogies and histories of the ancestors that spun the silk. This is their new life. Sounds like an amazing life, and it's beautiful there, but they can't see that. But I don't know if it's worth the price of being blind. As they tend to the ancestor moss, so we tend in this order the blind monks. While they toil in the dark, we serve in the light. They need food and water, we provide. They need tools and furniture, and we provide. They need secrecy and anonymity we provide. They need purveyors to sell the fruit of their labors and we provide. So that's what these, this, this order does. They provide all the needs of these monks that's sheltered in this moth cavern. At one time we also provided protection. Many generations ago Gudrun came to our temple Newly blinded by visions of what was to be, she brought with her new teaching. The visions of the ancestors foresaw the need of the monks to defend themselves. They train and practice the teachings of Gudrun constantly. They are masters of the sword, of no sword, the axis, and of no axis. As a novitiate, you will learn the teachings of Gudrun. You will learn the way of the peaceful fist. A peaceful fist? You will learn to serve the blind monks. You will learn to provide. In time, you may attain the peace and the insight of the ancestor moths. Now, is that a cool story or what? That's very, very interesting. When I was there, I really didn't understand all that about the moths. I just knew I had to go there to read that scroll. Thank goodness it didn't make me go blind, but then I wasn't a priest. Okay, that's, that's the end of our reading for today. So I hope you'll all come back and join me again next time. Uh, did Nico come out? No, he didn't. And Nico, he's still sitting around behind there in the bedroom. Okay, guys, I will see you the next time when you come back for a book reading. Bye-bye, grandkids.